I'm not ready. Well, you're live, whether you're ready or not. Ah, I'm escaping. Yeah, let's... Uh... Noletta, how are you? Ash. Cindy, Valerie, how are you guys? Donna, Colleen, True Noir. Pierre is just doing some stretches. What up? Up. I don't know. Alexandra, Gabriella. Miami Niche, how are you? Adam, I owe you a phone call. Sarah, Ari, Andrea. All right. So what is the timing here? Oh, maybe I should get in. Let's see. Oh, Alexandra said she is saying hello from Portugal. Oh. So at affair. Where is the live? How do you do the live? I thought I was pushing here. No, you do. Uh, refresh it. Swipe down. Like this? No. Or like this? Hmm. Ah. You you you're much better at refreshing thing than me. Voila. Oh, Charles is here. We're going to invite you on in just a, just a few minutes here, Charles. Uh, Valentin, how are you? Dora from New York. Hello, you tell me. We are, it's 2.02. Usually we start at 3. 2 or 3. One three, more minute. 3 p.m.? No, oh. 2.03. All right. Vered. Oh my God. Vered, I thought she was in the mountains. I thought she was lost in the Colorado mountain. Okay. Bienvenue, Vered. Bienvenue, Charlie. Bienvenue, everybody. I hear about the Sarah, Valerie. We have a lot of people here. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. So. What do you say? Andrew is here sometime. Next time, I'm, I'm trying to steal the phone to show you Andrew, but he's very shy. No. <laughs> so what, what do you say? Mr. Anna from Brazil is here with us too. Brazil. We have, we have... Woo! Welcome. Bienvenue. Hello. Shall we uh, start? So, oh my God, I see a lot of arts coming out. What? I didn't say anything yet. They're probably sending the arts to someone else. Okay, Andrew, shall we go? Shall we do it? We shall. Okay, one, two, three. Bonjour! This is Pierre from Savoir Faire, and here we are again in Novato, California. We're just a few miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge of San Francisco. And here we are, Pierre's live. And it has been. 150 days since we've been asked to shelter in place. We started, I go real fast because I repeat it every week, but for the newcomers. So here we are in the, you know, make of art supplies at Savoir Faire where we have all those beautiful, great art supplies from all over the world that we wholesale to our great customers, retailers. And then shut in place. We are locked down. Maureen and I, Maureen is my wife and my partner. Uh, we didn't know what to do. We sent everybody home. And after a few days, Maureen and I came back, decided that we should do basic operation. And then we declare art supplies are being essential. So now it's been 150 days. We haven't closed, but we have taken a lot of very, very big 
precaution like mask like social distancing washing your hands we've been very very careful and able to run 450 days we open thanks to a, a handful of very very dedicated committed employees that came back and to help us and uh, yes i declare art supply essential because we believe we supply people that need art to live to be good art is good for you art is good for the world we work with art therapists with teacher with schools and also have you you've heard about that we've been giving a lot to uh under service community through when people were shelter in place we provided a lot of paper and pencils for all those kids to be able to 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 work and we know especially for some who are stressed who have you know little uh, mental challenges or things like that art is essential and all those artists like you who need the supplies to work so we've been very active people call me the activist uh, because art is so great and we've been very generous and I see so many great examples of people giving art, giving art supplies, sharing and we see many of my friends who are teachers who share their teaching, you know, they, they demonstrate, they go on Zoom, on Teams, on Skype, on all those things and we see art is working. I see more and more people doing art so we are in a good place for that. Unfortunately, you know, this crisis, health crisis is still there. We don't know the end, but we know whatever, whenever it is, whatever it is, art will make it go through it better, nicer with your community. I learned also to reach out to my neighborhoods, to my neighbors and all that. So there's a lot of good things happening there. Um, today, we have a very, very, very special, uh, you know, a friend, you know, you see people coming, my guests are my friends, and uh, Charlie. Charlie, we've met several times at shows, at Face, at Portrait Society, and when I came to Sarasota once for, it was actually for a watercolor show, I was a keynote speaker for the story of paper, and I was... I went to the Southern Atelier and it was incredible. I was so impressed by the school and by the philosophy of Charlie and, and the chair and the cake. He loved some of the supplies, like the Sennelier, the thing. So he was like love in the first sight. So without delaying everything, anything more, uh, I would like to invite Charlie. Monsieur Charlie, come in. Ah, come in. So while, while we wait for him, I put a drawing. Every time I change the painting behind, and I thought of that because this is Alexis Steele that uh, did a little drawing. Of us. So is that it? He's here. He's hey, coming. Pierre, how's it going? Bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour, ça va? Ça va bien? Ah, tu parles français en plus. Ah, oh, beautiful, bien. beautiful. Good to see hey. you, Pierre. Ah, How's it going over there? You. I can see you on my phone here, but with a delay, so I, I, I can't watch it too much. So, uh, I got you. Charlie. Yeah. Very happy. Good to see you. Yes. Yeah, and I was, thank you again for inviting me to your zoom uh, presentation this day academy last week uh was this week or last week it was very very nice and uh, was very impressed by you know your work and how you talk to all those people there was hundreds of people it was fantastic so Thank tell you, me Pierre. Charlie, how did you become so good no. uh <laughs> this red shark you have to tell me something I've always seen the, from the Renaissance all this red shop type of technique. It was called differently, a different way. And but you're the first one who showed me that technique using real pastel, and that makes it painterly, very special. So how did you get there? Can you tell us a little bit about your story 
and how you got to be the leader in the bread shop pastel? Oh, well, I don't know about uh, being a leader, but I'll tell you one thing. I love Red Chalk because it is, um, to me, you look at a Red Chalk drawing and it has a lifeblood to it. It has an earthy feel and it, and it feels uh, almost primeval in a way, and very human and very warm. And, and so I, and I've always liked monochromatic work. And I've, I study drawing classically, and I've always loved the Renaissance drawings and, um, you know, the drawings by Pontormo and uh, Michelangelo and Leonardo. So I just love that. And then um, I had a really good uh, uh, friend and teacher, Robert Liberace, who was also, you know, studying those old masters, and uh, he, he showed me some things. But I have to say that um, I kind of went in my own direction with it. Um, and uh, because I, I work in a little more painterly style uh, lately, so I needed a chalk that wasn't too hard. I like, you know, I like to use the harder chalks for, for fine detail, but a softer substance or material um, is what I was looking for because I like the paint. And, and, and the thing is about that, Pierre, is um, that is, a, a, it's kind of more of like, a, it gives you a, a more free painterly quality, but still has a influence of the old master type work. So uh, that's why I love it. I just love it. And it's just become my thing. I don't know, it's just become one of those things I like to work in it, and then a lot of people um, are kind of getting known for this red chalk, and uh, <laughs> much to my chagrin, and uh, it's been so much fun. But it's been awesome to get to know you because you're like the expert on uh, on art materials. So I'm lear I've learned so much from you uh, about the about the materials, and I really appreciate that. Okay, so I have a a, a comment to make. Uh, I, you know, as we say, I picked up a few of your colors. I sneak, I snapped out downstairs in the warehouse, and I picked up. So when you do your demo, I'm just gonna doodle. But um, you know, I have to tell you, I, I'll say a quick little story. When I first came in this country, uh, it was almost 40 years ago. It'll be like 30 plus years, and I was a little uh, young. I was like 20, 21. Wow. And uh, when we decided to represent Sennelier, so the Sennelier family gave us, Maureen and I, the, you know, to become their representative, to become their ambassador in America. So when I came to New York, I met with the founder, the Fun, uh, Funi, Flora de Funi, who was the founder of the Pastel Society of America. And early on, we said we would partner to promote pastel in America. And the first thing I did, one of the first things, I said, you know, we need to change that impression of pastel. Ah! And I said, <laughs> from now on, I love that. We declare <laughs> pastel not a drawing, because at the time, people associate pastel as a drawing. And I said, from now on, we're going to call a pastel a painting. So when you talk to me about how the pastel allows you to be drawing more pencil, you can imagine how it resonates to me. So I'm sort of promoting. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So anyway, that's a little anecdote. That is so I cool. Know I didn't know that. that. I totally but, agree with you. <laughs> so next question, and I improvise, you know, I don't have any. Can you tell us about the founding? Uh, how did you? The story about the Southern Atelier. Yeah, Southern Atelier grew out of just my teaching. Uh, I moved to Florida about 15 years ago, and uh, I was studying up in uh, Philadelphia for a while. Um, and I spent a little time with Nelson Shanks up there. And then um, before that, I was in New York City. So I moved down here to Florida, to Sarasota, to just uh, because I just wanted to become a beach bum. 
and <laughs> and I just love love it here because it's so beautiful. It's, what we have one of the most beautiful beaches in the country here, Siesta Key, and we have Lido Beach, and we have these beautiful beaches. So I ended up staying here in Florida uh, because I just and I just love the beaches, you know. And I'll go out like right now is the perfect time at in the evening. We go out to the water, Gulf of Mexico, and I go swimming with the manatees, and uh, it's just. Wow wonderful but so when i moved down here there was nobody doing realism whatsoever it was unbelievable so we were the first art approved atelier in the state of florida um and and we opened that we opened oh i i developed the program very organically and then before you know it uh, people from all over the state were coming to study with me at the school and then now people from all over the country and world are coming to study at the atelier uh and um it's for you know it's for people who really want a serious kind of apprenticeship type approach and um learn i really feel that learning to draw is is fundamental to gaining your foundation as an artist so um we uh we we've been just plugging away here and i've just been teaching for the last you know 10 to 15 years uh Actually, I've been teaching for like 20 years now, but it's like it's uh, time goes by fast. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about, and then I think people are dying to see you doing a little thing uh, uh, a little later. But can you tell us you have a big workshop coming up? It's gay. Can you tell us? How, how yeah, so yeah, we have the red chalk workshop. I'll be teaching this. Uh, and this here, I'll be teaching this uh, uh, starting Monday, uh, Monday for four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all day uh, at Gage Academy of Art in Seattle, but I'm doing it online from Florida. So I'm, I'll be here in my studio and um, I'll be showing you exactly step by step my approach, how to go about creating a portrait drawing like this with red chalk. And we'll be using uh, the supplies that um, that you guys are providing for us, and um, uh, I'll show you just exactly how to use them. Now, uh, what's really fun is, you know, even though we're kind of, um, you know, we're experiencing so many changes in the world right now, there is a little silver lining to the clouds in the sense that we're able to connect. Now I'm able to give a workshop on the West Coast without even traveling from my studio, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that'll be Monday. There are a few spots available, so if you guys want to uh, hop in the workshop, come and join us. It's open to all levels of experience, uh, from beginners to advanced, and uh, we will be having a great time. We always have a wonderful time in my workshops because I. Try to keep it fun, light, upbeat, but also you're going to learn a lot about the classical methods. So yeah, and that I, I want to talk about the fun part because I, of course, uh, when we met with Charlie, I told you about his skills, his technique, the fact that he loves some of our products and our pastels, or, you know, and but most of it is your sense of humor. You are fun, you know. We are here. Art is fun. It could be hard work. You need to learn, to, to repeat. It's like music. You have to practice, practice, practice. But it can be done so much with a smile, with fun, and uh, all that. And that's what always like uh, with you. Every time we went anywhere, we always played and have fun with your uh, peers, teachers, or your students, or whoever, your collectors, and it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm right there with you, Pierre. I think that's why we connect uh, on this level, because I really believe that. Because if you want to do this for a long time, you have to enjoy it, you know? And it does require a long time to get good at this craft. So uh, it's important that you enjoy yourself along the way. Yeah. So uh, I think we, we should move for you to uh, I'll say one thing about the material. You'll say much more, but something unique actually for that started with that workshop. You design and you establish a little set 
that use it uh, on pastel using very selective and the special reds and the special thing and then the creta color. So that's also unique. You know, through this workshop, you'll be able to get the special Charlie set. Voila. Yes, so, uh, and it's 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 very reasonable too for the, the highest quality materials, which of course I use, only the best. And um, and and it's um, it'll be you know that 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 material material list or set will be in use during the workshop. So um, you know it, you can you can sign up at, at the Gage Academy um, a website or right if you click on in the link in my bio you can you can uh, go ahead and sign up for the workshop. There's also some demos available as well in my bio. The links in my bio. So. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it'll be pretty easy for you guys to, to join on if you wanted to. Okay. So, uh, all right. Can you can you show us a little trick? Sure. Well, uh, I love you know. I'll show you a little something. Um, you know, my set has these nine uh, colors in them of the of the uh, Seneliers. I love them because they correspond, and I specially designed it to correspond to the value scale. Okay, so each 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 color, it's pretty much monochromatic, but they're value steps. And so, uh, what we're going to be talking about is how each value will be able to create a form, or whatever you're looking at. Uh, an illusion of three-dimensional form in space, and so that's uh, that's kind of the the thought behind the whole process. So let me get a grab a sheet of paper, and uh, I'll just play around with. Would that be okay, uh, Pierre? If I played around with some. Yeah, of that yeah, stuff? yeah. We like to play. I, I, I'll play around. But I'll be messy, but I see what you're saying about the values, and yet the same colors. It's very interesting. Well, this is my sister, by the way. She posed for me the, the other day, and uh, my sister Stephanie, my older sister. But you could see that it's not all transparent in the lights. Um, so you have you have the shadow areas, which are that I believe like that number seventy seven, which is the Venetian red color of the Seneliers, and then you have the lighter half tone, which is the uh, vermilion color. And then up to into the yellow ochre and the gamboge uh, color, which I love so much. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to get a sheet of paper. Okay. So while you get your sheet of paper, I'll say one thing quickly because when I saw it at your class, they, they, they like the story. Just want to tell people that the Chenelier Pastel, the way you, 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 you know it today, was developed for Edgar Degas when the French Impressionist when he came to Paris. Actually, he was in Louisiana before uh, that. He was in New Orleans. And I stayed in his home when I'm in New Orleans. Uh, anyways, he- Did you really? He, wow. He wanted to do some uh, quicker, faster paintings. And he wanted to go inside the opera house the dance studios and all that. So he, he went to the store, the Sennelier store, because he was using the oils the, and said, oh, can you make those colors in pastel? And the first 50 colors of the Sennelier pastel range were the colors designed and created for Degas. So you see there is Degas and Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cool, man. I love the history, and I love I love your knowledge of it, Pierre. Um, if I could only be like Degas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's look at your your show us. Okay, uh, so this is uh, just regular old paper. So here's the um, yeah. I oh, there you go. There you have them all there. This is the um, the creative color. Uh, stick here, the, the old uh, just simple uh, lead holder, and you put the sanguine in it, and I sharpen it, um, 
And uh, let me just show you a little bit. Um, let's see. You know, maybe I'll draw a skull. How, how much time do I have here? Andrew, he's the time you've, you've got a, about uh, 15 minutes, and that'll give us just a little bit at the end to choose a, a winner for you, the drawing. Oh, oh okay. by the way, yes, we have a giveaway. You know that it's one of the sets. Charlie's sets will be the giveaway today. So anyway, and make sure you guys can share while you watch. You know, if you know people who would like to see his demo, you can put sh press share on your Put some light on it there. Okay, I'll just do a little sketch. So, I'm just going to use that uh, create a color. And uh, I'll just do a little skull sketch. How's that? Perfect. As long as it's not my skull, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do a little, little skull sketch. And um, I have to watch. I'm, I'm blocking it in real quick with the, uh, with the Create a Color Pencil. Uh, and um, I'm going to go ahead and block in the, the eye socket, the zygomatic bone right here and here, nasal. Bone. And we'll go and go ahead and put it. I wasn't planning on doing this, but what the heck? Hey, you know, my show, by the way, for the new people, this is always totally improv. You know, <laughs> spontaneous. There's no script. We didn't talk before. He doesn't know the question I'm going to ask. We don't know whether he's going to paint or. So it's it's live. It's a true live, no script. Truly live improvisation. Truly live. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm gonna just block in this skull real quick, just to give people an idea. Get the mandible here, and uh, I like to block it in very very quickly. And uh, you know, a skull is. I would say for any portrait artist, uh, you got to know how to draw a skull. You gotta know how to draw a skull. So why do you say that? What what, what about the skull? Why? Is it well, so it's about the you know, skull is about structure, and you know if you know what what makes the difference between a, a good portrait artist and and not so hot is that a good one knows the structure underneath, um, they know the skin. Whereas a as a so so portrait artist will only draw the features. But if you know that skull underneath the features, you are really going to uh, have an advantage. And you're going to uh, be drawing form more than anything else. And form is really the name of the game. Okay, so I blocked in that skull real quickly here. Uh, just some basic planes. It's a, more of a plain skull. Okay, now that was with the, uh, cre the creative color, okay? Uh, now I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to go in and I, I'm going to take a little bit of the vermilion, the Sennelier, the beautiful Sennelier vermilion, and I'm oh, just going to put a little bit on a chamois, okay? A little bit on a chamois. And I'm going to just mass in some big brush strokes. Big brush strokes here. So you're actually painting with the chamois? I'm painting with the chamois, yes. And the reason why I'm doing that here is because uh, if I use this chalk directly, it will be very dark. And I'm, you know, I want to sneak up on it so that, you know, everything isn't immediately there and then, um, and then I have to correct. So yeah. I'll sneak up on it, you know, let it, uh, let it be a little bit lighter at first. So I'll say a little something, if you don't mind. Uh, technically, one of the reasons you are able to, to do that, to, to apply on the chamois or, or on your palette sometimes, is yes. the fact that 
those pastels are made 100% pure pigment and they're dry in the air. So that makes it extra soft. So you can pick up, you know, you can pick up the colors directly as opposed to other kind of pastel which are baked, compressed uh, and all that. So this is totally free flowing pigment almost on the skin. So you can pick it up. I love it. Lo absolutely love it. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to the next color, the Venetian red. Oh, I love this Venetian red. This is so rich. Look at how rich that color is. It's so beautiful and so rich. I mean, there's nothing like it. That's going to be much richer than a natural chalk, isn't it, here? Yeah. Now, Charlie, we had, we had somebody ask a question, and uh, sure. she, she is asking if you seal between layers or if you can seal between layers. I, I don't. I don't. But you can. Um, I will only seal it um, if... I make a mistake and need to go on top of it or if the paper runs out of grain and, you know, I, I fill all the grain in the paper. So um, other than that, I don't. So I'm painting it in with the Venetian red. Okay. Now is the next step. I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to just put in some half tone with the brush. Okay. Okay. And that's just to bring it out into the lights a little bit and uh, just get, get, get a little bit of those brush strokes. On there. You know, that's fantastic for me to see, my past, I said mine, you know, our pastels used with a brush like that. It's so much fun. Oh, because, it's fun. It's yeah. fun to do. It's fun to do. It really is and fun to do. We had somebody else asking if you can use uh, pan pastel soft tools. And I, I'll, I'll say, uh, yes, absolutely. You can use any, any soft tools. There's a lot of... Uh, like silicone makeup blending things that uh, that people use for for blending, so that's all possible. Yes, but what I would say it's for Charlie to answer. Yes, you can use all that. And anyway, any artist is like being a cook, a chef. You can use all the tools and spices and things you have. But I noticed that Charlie was using chamois. Chamois is much softer than those tools. So, because the pigment, when you use pastel, you have on the surface those, you can see the particle of the pigment and it gives you a, a lot of depth and the light comes in. So when you, if you use too hard of a tool or if you, what people are asking about sealing, if you use a fixative, you lose the richness of that pencil like thing. So just saying, so I think, that's probably why Charlie's using the, the, the chamois because it, it doesn't hurt the pigment. Right, yeah, Charlie, more. that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah, it, you, you know, I like to experiment with different things, but the chamois is great because it's so soft, you know? And you know what else I like to use, Pierre, is um, you have, uh, the, I have to say, I've tried every single blending stump in the world, but create a color is the best one. I have to say it. <laughs> the blending okay. stuff. It's the best one because it's shaped better than the other ones on the tip. And also it's cleaner. So for some reason, of of you sent me a bunch of stuff and the create a color blending stuff is the best one I would say out there. <laughs> That's interesting. I use, I use it to draw with. Hey, thank you to say that because it's interesting. Way back, I remember having argument with some art supply dealers, you know, uh, trying to convince me that a, a stump, you know, like that, is they all the same? And why is ours made in Europe instead of China? And why does it matter and all that? And so I'm glad you recognize there's a difference. You know, that it's not, they're not all the same. People think it's a commodity item that they're all made the same. So you, you can say right, that. Right. Okay. 
And, and our, our friend Lise, uh, Lise King is here and she's agreeing and saying that's very good to know. Uh, somebody else was asking if you're using oil or soft pastels. So Sean, those are soft pastels that Charlie's using. Yes, thank you, Andrew. They are soft pastels. Because, I, you know, the, with me is I make a lot of mistakes. So I want to be able to correct the mistakes. And you can correct them easier than with the oil pastels, it, just in my, my opinion. So tell us, did you change color? Which color are you using now? I'm using the Venetian red with the blending stump, and I'm drawing with this. With now, Charlie, that, blending that blending stump. stump that blending stump looks well loved. Do you do you keep using them for a while? <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. I use them a long time. <laughs> so I'm drawing the uh, zygomatic bone here. Here's the uh, fr the uh, zygomatic process of the frontal bone. The frontal bone is right here, and it goes all the way across. Here's the coronal suture on top, and then it comes down, and that's what makes up your face. And uh, your muscles of facial expression will, will layer on to the, that front plane of the face. And uh, so if I need to go in with a little bit more detail, I could use this. Or I'll, go, I'll switch back to the, uh, the, uh, the uh, create a color pencil. But as you can see, I'm sculpting, right? I'm, I'm carving like I'm carving marble. And that's what I like to do. I'm carving marble. That's how I feel when I'm drawing. It's, it's how I feel. I feel like I, I'm, I'm sculpting and carving. Here's the mastoid process, the auditory meatus, and then coming back over here. There's the pillar of the mouth there. And here's the mental protuberance in the front. There's the mental protuberance. We call that the mental protuberance. Just think of it like when you're thinking, you're like, hmm, right here, the chin. Okay, so that's the mental protuberance. Now, so far, I've only used two of the chalks, but you can see you're getting a really nice, you know, range of value. I don't mean to be turning my back all the time, but my supplies over on this side. Okay, and so I'm turning that for, I'm going to squint down and just try to... Oh, work. there's a question. I see a question and I saw it on your live. Someone is asking, how uh -huh. do you get the pastel on your palette? Last time you showed, you were gluing a sandpaper, right? Can you tell us? Yes, that, yeah. So what I do is um, I take a little palette and I glue with a spray glue uh, 120 grit sandpaper on the surface. And then I just cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And so now I've got the materials right there. That's how I do it. That's so cool. You know, I'm going to make one of those for myself. Oh, that's fun. To do. It's fun. I love it. I love the idea of having a pastel on the palette like that and pick it up with a... No, I, I love it. So thank you for the question. Whoever asked the question, that was a good one. So, um, yeah. So now I'm just going to uh, use the pastel themselves and my fingers, okay? Just my fingers. Uh, and if you need to uh, put in, take a little bit, uh, go a little bit lighter, I'm using the number 115, which is part of that set as well. The number 115 is the yellow ochre. Ah, I have it. <laughs> yeah, it's not very red, but 115. No, it's, it's warm, <laughs> but it matches. I usually pick a warm paper. So like this paper is kind of a warmer color, so it kind of matches the paper a little bit. But you gotta be careful with it. And the and, best and part is you could use your fingers and your hands. Yeah. I finger paint a little bit. And uh, talking about paper, and I don't know which one you're using today, but there was, you know, I know we're working together on getting you the right paper. And I know you like the LRA, vice versa, from Fabriano. Yes, Fabriano. love that. Yeah. 
And the Tiepolo is good too. Was it the Tishano? What is, what is it, the Tishano? There's, well, but there's three paper that you've been using, the Tiziano, Tiziano. which is uh, your paper that's considered a pastel paper. But, and yeah, then, that's a great uh, one. That colors. works really well. I like the smooth side of that one. Yeah. And then there's the LRA that we call sometimes vice versa because there's one side very, very, very smooth and the other side uh, textured. And then the one you're using a lot, but more for longer, not quick, quick drawing, but it's the Tiepolo, which is a 100% cotton mold made paper that's very rich with the fibers and all that. that yeah. often I for like your smooth paper for, my, for my, uh, my red chalks. I tend to use the smoother papers. Yeah. So um, great, look at that. So you're still using the 115 now? Um, I'm going to switch to, yes, I was using that, but now I'm going to switch back to this. And now I'm just going to tighten up the drawing a little bit with the pencil. So, uh, Andrew, how are we doing with time? We have a, well, we still have, you can still continue for five, good five minutes. Yeah, right? five, five, ten. Yeah, five, ten minutes. So you're good, Charlie. Oh, okay. Well, hey, so this is going quick. <laughs> uh, Andrew, how are we doing with the giveaway? Do we have to? Is I, uh, you know, I'm I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Cindy. Are we selecting the giveaway, or did we want Charlie to select the giveaway? I don't know how we were going to do that. Let me find out. Yeah, because Cindy, she's not here with us, but Cindy, she's really coordinating. Well, she's here with us. She's just not physically. Here yeah, yeah, she's us. not physically, but she's here. And Cindy is well, great. Well, I want to and... thank Cindy. She put this together and um, sent me all the information and. Uh, it was very nice. Um, I think it's really great that uh, we're going to, you know, have an opportunity to give the set away. Um, so. Uh, oh, and, and Cindy, Cindy has told us the winner is Sweaty Palm 316. <laughs> so congratulations to Sweaty Palm 316. Wow, Sweaty Palm. Who yes. has also been uh, our most interactive person today. So congratulations to oh, them. Oh, wow. All right. Yes. Bravo. Woo. And where, where, from where? where are you? Where, where is that? We, we will have to find out. I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Sweaty Palm. That's awesome. And that's a, what a great handle. Instagram handle, that is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Awesome. So how do you, can I ask you a, a, a question while you finish? How are you yeah. doing with the atelier? Are you going to be able to start doing physical? Because I know you're doing great and we're going to continue to do a lot of yeah. live you know, video, but physical, are you going to be able to open? Are you open already? What's yeah, the so what we're doing, Pierre, is we're only allowing the full-time apprentices to be at the studio. Uh, so... Um, uh, we have just a you know a, a, a smaller group of full time apprentices who are very dedicated to learning the traditions of realism and classical art, and uh, we have allowed them back in, and so now they each get their own approximately eight foot studio section that they can use, and they are socially distanced uh, in the studio space. And so uh, the, the apprentices uh, is, are what we're really focusing on at this moment. And uh, we probably won't open any part-time classes for a while, uh, but uh, at least the apprentices can be in here working full-time and they can, um, you know, they can continue to grow and to learn. And we have some great apprentices. Actually, I think uh, shout out to any of them who are watching here today. Um, if you're an apprentice at the studio, raise your hand and, 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 and thanks for being here, guys. Okay. Too bad you didn't win any of the, the <laughs> prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, there's Ash. Hi, Ashlyn. Thanks uh, for being here. Hey, Gilberto, how's it going? I really admire your work, man. Beautiful. All right, Sweaty Palm. Yes. Ah, oh, here she goes. <laughs> sweaty Palm. I'm so happy from Los, oh, from Los Angeles. 
Thank you for being here, Sweaty Palm. All right. Very nice. Is that... Hey! Hi! Hi, Ashlyn. So, uh, I think, you know, we should... We have another five minutes. Well, that's minutes. about it. That's about it. I just want to do one last thing. No, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use the, uh, the white that's in the set and i'm just going to put a few highlights on and then we'll call it go, go ahead you still have five minutes in five minutes we're going to stop you know but while oh, you okay. do that anybody has other questions or things you know take take advantage of uh, of charlie that you have him live He's gonna answer all your question i'm here uh, i really love this uh this chalk here. Oh, Pierre, um, I wanted to ask you a question. Actually. Ah, okay. Um, when, uh, when did, uh, when were the pastels first created? Well, so you see pastels, <laughs> it, it, I'm sorry, uh, I have a, I don't have a, a short answer. On other product, I have a very short answer, but pastels, we're still researching exactly because the, the true pastel, it depends what you refer to as pastel because the method of using, you know, pigment in, in a stick form, you know, was done millions of years ago. You can go to the Lascaux case and it's sort of a pastel that you have on the wall. It's this very simple iron oxide pigment from the earth that they manage to put it and they can also, the, the time is really endless. The name pastel uh, comes actually from a plant that was uh, in the south of France that was using, you know, was a, a color that were a, a, a flower that was used to create a color for the textile industry. But by the process, they found there was some foam and there was be able to color chalks and all that. So that oh, was really? in pastel. But simultaneously in Italy during the Renaissance, they were using sort of similar thing that were called pastello and all that. So the, uh -huh. the origin of the Pastel, it's not very very uh, specific because right. there's different form of it. Depends what you call pastel. But when the pastel became a genre, you know, recognized as the pastel, you know, technique, was in the 17th century, uh, 18th, 17th, 18th century in France with the pastel. And in fact, the most famous was an Italian lady who came from Italy and went to France. And that's, that's where you have all the portraits from pastel, pastel portrait that came. And I have to tell you, one of the unique thing about pastel also is the most archival uh, color in the world. You go to the Met, I've been to the Met because I, I know the curator very well, the conservator, you can see portraits from Quentin de Latour or from this period, from the 17th, 18th century, you look yeah. at them, they look like they were painted yesterday. As opposed to oil paint that may darken or crash, you have to restore pastel, it stays exactly so. Interesting. I don't know that answered the question. I'm sorry, I do full lecture. That's, a great, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. I, I would love, to, I could probably sit with you for hours over a glass of wine and talk about this stuff, Pierre. Yeah, I can't wait too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty uh, soon. This is the dark one. I love this number 265. This is the, the, uh, uh, the Venetian brown. I love this one. And I'm just putting in the final, final darks on this little tiny little sketch here. I didn't even know I was going to do this, but hey, it's ah. fun. You see? Surprise! <laughs> uh, all right. No, it's so much fun. Thank you. And you know, it feels like I'm with you, next to you. It's, it's Doesn't kind of it? Cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I talk to you like you are. <laughs> it's funny. I feel closer that sometime when we're at trade show and you're here, there's so many people around you. Yeah. Like, 
you know, around us that, and here we feel almost intimate. I mean, close, it's, it's very fun. So yeah, I yeah. think we're gonna start getting ready. You know, Instagram can shut us off any moment. Oh, okay. Now. All right. So, uh, well, there you go. There's your spell sketch. <laughs> so I, I will say my uh, go paint final, but you have one more thing to say, uh, uh, Charlie. What are you? What are you saying? Give us uh, the. Well, I the, just the want to thank the, everybody for being here. And if you if you would like to join me for my portrait drawing workshop, it starts Monday, and you can still get in. So I would love to see you there. You will learn so much. We're going to have a great time. And I want to really thank you, Pierre and, and Andrew uh, at, at Savoir Faire and Vered Pasternak, who has been so instrumental in, in introducing us and getting things moving with this. And uh, we love you, Vered. And uh, she's, she's going to be taking the workshop, too. Um, so I'll, I'll be seeing you Monday. And uh, yeah, I just wish everybody uh, health and safety. And I want to thank you so much, Pierre, for uh, having me today. All right. No, but thank you, you know, uh, to came last minute. I, I mean, last minute, a few days ago, we, we talked about that. So no, no, thank you. It's a pleasure. But thank you, everybody, for coming. Please, it's such a pleasure to see you every week. Some of you coming every week. Thank you. I feel like I have a fan club almost. But <laughs> many of you are here to visit with our guests. And, and, and Charlie, Thank you. I've seen a few comments going by, and they, they really love. Hey, Emily. So, uh, <laughs> on that note, Mr. Andrew, Cindy, is it time to go? So, one, two, three, go! Go! Hey! <laughs> love you, Charlie. Love, love you, Pierre. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Go, go, go. See you guys. <laughs>